Well, uh, so that is that matter we're discussing tonight. We put the matter out on social media and a lot of you were talking about it. We'll be addressing some of those questions uh, you brought on board. But joining us uh, tonight for this conversation, Samuel Amegaibo is Executive Secretary of the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association, or GREDA for short. He joins the conversation. Also joining him, Mr. Winston Wobbill, uh, Head of Advantage Banking, Echo Bank Ghana, and my colleague Israel Laie, host of the Habitat Fair 2021, and one with practical mortgage experience. He'll be telling us about his own story, and uh, we'll be sharing those details with all of you. You can also uh, check us out live on Joy News, Joy Prime, MyJoyOnline.com, DSTV Channel 421, and Go TV Channel 144 on radio. We're live on Joy 99.7 FM, Love 99.5 FM in Kumase, and a dozen affiliates across the country. I'm Benjamin Nakakbo, and this is The Probe. So very quickly now, we shall uh, get to... Uh, guests and of course we invite you to uh, send in your messages uh, I'll be communicating with you apart from uh, join news on social media how you can send uh, your messages through and those that we have already we shall start addressing them with our guests so let's do this Mr. Amegaibo uh, thank you so much once more for making the time to join us it's, it's quite a stark reality, isn't it? The last time from the 2010 uh, census, we found out that the housing deficit in terms of units stood at around 1.7 million, million, which represented about 5.7 million Ghanaians, yes. if you put it side by side. The Ghana Statistical Service said that by 2020, which is last year, would have been looking at about 2 million housing units as a deficit. Now, you have been in the real estate industry for a long time. How did we end up here? Uh, I think it is mainly because, first of all, I have to say good evening to your viewers. Mm -hmm. And uh, this topic it is very interesting to all of mm -hmm. us. And your question as posed uh, is right. However, we may not have done a few things right because as of 2010, when the uh, statistics came out, we needed to be delivering a certain number of units annually to augment or to safeguard against the, the deficit. But unfortunately, we have been doing far less than what we should be doing. Uh, if we had done about 100,000 100, units annually, we would have been able to confront it by now. But I am told we are doing around 35 to 40,000 thereabout right. annually. So it means that we have compounded the deficit and it has gotten worse as we speak and as the projections show that we should be looking around 2 million. That is the reason we haven't done what we should be doing in the past. And 10 years down the line, uh, it has compounded. And, and rightly so, like you say, we're just feeding the, the system with about 40,000 on, yeah. on average and every year, yes. which means that time and again, we just keep adding to the pool. And yeah. now even some are saying that the, the projections that we have are even woefully inadequate, that it is much more. Ma, yeah, the they, problem is bigger than we even realize. It's much bigger than we are. Mm -hmm. and, and it will interest you to know that out of the number that we put on the market, it is only 5% of it that is supplied by real estate companies. 90% mm. uh, is ban done by individuals who do incremental building. They start small, they add on, and uh, sometimes 20 years, they are still building or they complete around that time. And so we need to take certain steps and take certain measures to, to change the, 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 the way we are doing things, to make sure that we are increasing the stock it's either we are taking the, the mantle from the individual development and make it commercial for real estate developers to get the opportunity to build for us so that we can relax and just look for the money to pay. But if the ratio is going to remain the same and everybody will have to struggle, go and find land, go and find fund, fund, funding, recruit uh, uh, workers to work for you and build. If you're a medical doctor, perhaps you're supposed to concentrate on taking care of the sick. Then you are in the office and yet your mind is back home <laughs> looking at your masons and carpenters working. Mm. I think it doesn't order well for the nation. And so we need to take the necessary steps to make sure that we make the change. All right. Uh, Mr. Wobbill, now you play a crucial role in all of this, uh, you know, not just your bank, Echo Bank, but all the banks, most of the banks in, in, in the system because you are offering these mortgages and all of that. You were at the Habitat Fair uh, recently. 
What would you say is that crucial dynamic from the financial standpoint that is hampering people from owning homes or making that step to own their own homes? We'll talk about mortgages, but what do you feel is that crucial step in between that is hampering people from owning their own homes? Okay, so um, thank you. Um, good evening to your uh, viewers. So I would say um, one of the crucial steps that is hampering people, and um, as he said, um, I would say planning, mm -hmm. and then knowing how to start the project in the first place. Wow. And then it brings our question, to build or to buy. Right. Because making that choice and knowing which choice to make at which time goes a long way to affect how your project is going and whether you are even going to own a house now or own a home when you are about going on retirement. Mm. That is also very key for us. And it's all about planning. So you need to know, maybe based on the resources I am getting now, can I start the project now? Or do I have to wait for a number of years? Or maybe even when I'm pensioning off, then I can do something. But, but someone would ask you, I mean, why wait till you pension off? That is a very precarious time to even say you're putting up a structure. Exactly. But unfortunately, that is where we find ourselves. We, we, a lot of people in our country find ourselves at a situation where people are moving into their own homes just when they're about going on retirement. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we have a solution for that. At EcoBank, we just um, started a partnership with, um, for instance, we started with Enterprise. We are in talks with other pension trustees mm -hmm. where you are able to unlock your future pension today because you know that in the mortgage industry, one of the, in, during taking a mortgage, one of the key things is would require you to make an equity contribution. And so we are saying that your pension that has accumulated can still accumulate, compound for you mm -hmm. to take your money when you are going on pension. However, you are able to use that as security to get 100% financing from your bank, from EcoBank. Right. And this allows you to leave your pension today. So you don't wait till you go on pension to unlock those funds. You are unlocking it now. Okay. And it and I know that is an option that some people are adopting now. Exactly. It's sort of using your pension. I don't know whether the, the proper term would be as collateral or something, but yes. you're using it as some sort of seed money ahead of you know, owning your own home. Exactly. And the advantage is that you don't actually have to withdraw the funds. The funds are with your trustees mm. compounding for you, and then you get to pay for the house. And then the good thing is that you are now paying for your own home. So you are paying your own rent. Yeah, or your own landlord, as against having to now, as he said, be building small, small, mm. waiting maybe 10, 15 years to complete, you still have to pay rent now. So back to your question. So that hinders people from owning their own homes mm. because you end up doing two things at the same time and it becomes a drain on the pockets of a lot of people. And the two things that Mr. Wobbel is talking about is basically you're making the payment for your rent and your landlord or landlady will be taking, uh, you know, yearly or what, every two years. And at the same time, you would be, well, trying to put something together on that structure uh, that you, you are putting together. So those are the dynamics. And the question is, would you build or would you buy? That is what we are discussing uh, this night or tonight on uh, the probe. We're also joined by Israel Laya, my colleague right here uh, at uh, Joy News. And he'll be sharing with us his own uh, story, uh, exciting story, I must say, one that will teach us a lot of lessons. But uh, Israel Laya, thank you very much for joining the conversation. Thank you too, Ben. Great. I, I, I love the look of the corner where you find yourself. You never disappoint, uh, do you, Israel? Uh, but before we get into the nitty gritty, I'd just like you to share with all of us, uh, those watching, those listening, from the 2021 Habitat Fair, what are some of the things people said, people who came around wanting to own their own houses? What are some of the, the, the things they said that border on this discussion, which they shared with you, that you can also share with all us? Right. All right, so it has to do with the, the launch. So we just launched the fair on Friday, and the, uh, the two gentlemen you have in the studio, Winston and uh, Saga, uh, Megaibo, they were both there. And they shared essentially the, the, some of the things they're talking about right now. And there were some other things that were talked about. So EcoBank has all these options available for people who are seeking to own 
their own homes where they want to build or want to buy, they have the options available. And they're talking about how you can tap into your uh, pension funds and uh, get that structure going. Uh, but one of the other options that has come up is rent to own, mm -hmm. where you'll be essentially paying something like rent. But at the end of the day, you tend to own the property. So that's another option that's available. But for me, from, from where I stand, you ask the question to build or to buy, and if you're speaking to me from the experience that I've had, I would advise you based on a number of things. But yes, to build or to buy, they're both good options, but it depends on a number of conditions, which I can go into a lot later. Okay, so we shall be getting into some of those. Last year, I was at the Habitat Fair, and it was interesting because I was sharing with Mr. Wobble that I asked for, you know, some of the, the, the schemes available. I scanned through them and believe you me, we must see a no day ground. And it gets you thinking. If people that you would say even are middle class, so to speak, uh, looking at our landscape, struggle when it comes to some of these facilities and putting up something <laughs> Uh, dignifying or respectable, then you can imagine what the masses, those who fall into the category of the six million plus uh, Ghanaians who don't have houses, how uh, they can end up with such facilities. So my question then to you would, would be that, in light of that, your mortgage experience, what was it like? What, what, what are the details that you can share with us concerning going for a facility to, to own a structure at, at, at the end of the day? Okay, I, I, I wouldn't want to use my mortgage experience because uh, it, it's not it's it's regular, it's not usual. It's, mm. For most people, it's going to be out of their reach because you're supposed to come up with, what, 25% uh, mm. uh, deposit. And the kind of 25% I may be talking about, maybe someone's um, entire mortgage. So I, I wouldn't want to approach the conversation that way. I want to let's look at it this way, that you can start small and then you can upgrade over time. So I just had this conversation just before I joined. I reached out to my brother-in-law, who's a builder. Mm -hmm. He's into construction. He, he owns this company, much less construction. So I asked him if someone wanted a bed sitter or what you call a, a studio apartment, how much would it cost for the person to build it? Okay? Mm -hmm. And and I was saying basic. You don't need to go for anything, you know, flashy from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Go for something that you can accommodate. And I'd encourage people who are even young. I mean, you've just started work you're probably staying in your parents' home or you have some place, place that you're purchasing, you can start. So I asked him how much, and you know, a lot of the time we have young people who have bought, who have acquired lands. So I have this land here and I intend to build on it. This, my, my brother-in-law tells me, if you gave him 60,000 cities, hmm. 60,000 cities, that's $10,000. It can build you a studio apartment. So you have a, your room, you have a small kitchenette, you have your toilet and bath, and that's all you need, really. So it's like you have a, a, a chamber and a self-contained chamber and hall or whatever you call it. But then that gives you a start. And you can build this in the corner of your property, of the land that you have. Place it in the corner and start living there. That's your house to start with. Over time, and you can take a, a loan for it, 60,000 cities. You can, you can go for a loan, a personal loan, not even a mortgage loan, a personal loan. Use that, build it, you're staying in there. You may have to pay, if you have to go and rent, you probably would have to pay rent of maybe 1,000 cities a month. I don't know. Or maybe 500 cities a month. Mm -hmm. But this is a case where the thousand, if you're paying 1,000 cities a month, that's like in, what, six, five years, 
It's like you paid rent advance of five years or 60,000 cities, but you have your own home. Okay, and you can start that way. Then over time, when your incomes improve, then you can decide that the rest of the land, you're going to build something, take your time and build something there. So that's the way out, encourage people to want to start small. If you don't have any land, I encourage people to take up mortgages and take a mortgage, go for something small to start with again. And people will say, yeah, the mortgages are expensive. Maybe I have to pay 1,000 CDs a month. Yes, 1,000 CDs a month for now would impact your finances. But you don't expect that you're going to earn 1,000 CDs for the rest of your life. So 1,000 CDs for now, two, three years, maybe 1,000 CDs for now may be a third of your salary. But in two, three years, it's going to be 50% of the salary. It's not going to hurt you that much. Mm. So that's the way I'd encourage people to want to look at mortgages and want to look at owning their own properties. Okay. Start very, small. Very important point you make there about starting small because it's a, it's a very you know, positive way. You, you can't just jump to the highest level or your dream house. You must start from somewhere. But the land acquisition and all of that, let, let me come into the studio now mm -hmm. and come to Mr. Wobble because he handles the money matters when it comes to all of this. And, he, and probably you can, you can ask them what if what I'm saying is, is feasible, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Megai. That, that, if, you're to, <laughs> if you're going to a realtor, mm. the realtor, of course, will put in his profits. Okay, that's why some people will think that they would rather build than yeah. buy. Because if I'm buying, you know, and then who, I mean, who's going to offer you a, a $10,000 house here in Ghana right now? So, so those are the real questions. Now, Mr. Wobbill, I, I want to practicalize this. He's talking of someone who may be a fresh graduate, you know, trying to strike it out there, maybe earning about a, a basic salary of about 1,000 CDs a month. Mm. Now, if you're going to look at that basic structure, which would cost you about... 60,000 CDs, which is the equivalent of some, what, $10,000 thereabouts. What are the practicalities? If such people come to you, your entity, wanting to start, you know, with some facility, is it even practicable? Can you, someone earning 1,000 CDs, how do they get this done within X number of years? Okay, so thank you. So, Benjamin, so for, say, a young graduate earning 1,000 CDs, um, would take say about maybe five years to be able to pay maybe a ten thousand dollar loan mm. and um, i think he made a very important point about starting small and it boils back to what i said earlier about planning because if you are taking a mortgage you don't really need to start big you don't really need to build your first your dream home at first touch this can be done maybe five, 10 years down the lane. But if you're a starter family, a two bedroom, a three bedroom, no, even a two bedroom should be okay. And with that, you should be able to do something, as he said, maybe with a $10,000. And what people, uh, what we also need, viewers also need to understand is that you can actually even upscale by actually even trading in your first building or your first project and then go for a bigger one. Because mind you, in a few years, maybe five years down the lane, the value of that one bedroom studio example that he gave studio would have yeah. appreciated. Mm. And that gives you something, returns on that for you to upscale. That is maybe if the family size is growing, then you can look at something um, bigger. Okay. So it's, it's very practical it's very feasible well it's very feasible all you need to do basically is to get in touch with uh, some of these entities like uh, echo bank and they can walk you through the processes and then of course you will know what exactly must be done even with a thousand cds like you mentioned in some what 60 months yes you could be owning your own home yeah. fully fully uh, we'll be taking some of your messages mm -hmm. shortly from uh, social uh, media, questions that you've been posing, and uh, try to get the right answers uh, to them. But coming back to Mr. Uh, Amegayibo, so following on all of this that we are discussing, if it is this uh, feasible, why do we still have this, this gap? What, what, what is the missing link? Mr. Warbill has spoken about planning, 
And of course, there is also the bit about financing. Is it the lack of knowledge of some of these things that we are discussing? Is that also a core part of uh, the problem, why people are not getting to own uh, their, their homes? Yeah, it, it may be part. But, uh, you know, whichever way you want to go, whether you want to build or you want to buy, I think the number one thing is cost. If you ask anybody, the three important issues when it comes to deciding whether to buy or to build is cost for first, second cost, third cost. cost. So <laughs> you realize that is the issue of cost. But then there are certain ingredients that fall under the cost. And uh, if you are able to put it under your management very well, then you'll be able to manage yourself and take a decision on which path you want to go. So some of the things are um, general, in general terms. Mm -hmm. Whether you want to build or buy, you have to understand that affordability has to be determined by you. Um, affordable uh, housing itself, the definition has not been well stated. But if you look at the document that was uh, given to us as a national housing uh, policy yeah. document, it says that if a household can use 30 to 40 percent of their, 30 percent of their income to service any kind of facility over a period of 20 years to own a particular property, then that property is affordable to you. So in the first place, everybody must determine what is affordable to him. Mm. And then we move to the next step. You have to have control levels. The control, there are several aspects. Do you want to have a control over the funding? Do you want to have a control over the design specification? Do you want to have a control over the material choices? You have to determine that as well. Then the source of funding in general, how you are going to fund it. Are you going to pay outright? Are you going to use a mortgage system to pay? Are you going to use a loan facility? Or what kind of arrangement? You have to know. And then the availability of land and location is also critical. It is a very critical decision. If you want to live in airport residential area, you must know today that nobody has any left land in airport residential area. That means that you are going to buy from somebody. If you want to live in, let's say, a bit of asket, then you can negotiate because mm -hmm. they are virgin lands, a lot of virgin lands, so you can have it cheaper. So location and availability of land is a determining factor whether you want to buy or you want to build. Then time. If you want to shop, even shopping for housing, the time you will have to go to various stakeholders, uh, estate developers to go and look at the kind of uh, development they have, then you make the decision to want to buy one or two. It's a time factor. Then the time to actually build. So you have to look at these two time factors and decide which way you want to go. Then there are several advantages and disadvantages of choosing any of them. But I guess uh, uh, in the course of the discussion, we'll bring some of them up and expand it. But you have to just weigh these two options very well and then decide. But there's one factor I always want to draw people's attention to. There's something good about mortgage. Mm. Mortgage is, may look expensive to you, but at the end of the day, there's one advantage that nothing, nothing comes close to it. You take possession of the property now and enjoy the property now until the time that God calls you. But if you don't go for mortgage and you decide you want to build and you don't have the money sitting down to pay for uh, the, 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 the materials and get the structure in place for you, then that means you are going to do incremental. And you know how, lot, how our landlords have been disturbing us. You are paying rent and then you are funding your house project. Carpenters are stealing you, masons are stealing you. And as I explained to you, if you are a professional, you should have the time to be to be able to monitor your business than to be, uh, become a, a site supervisor or a foreman right. also organizing your project. So in fact, there are so many pros and cons that if you weigh the two and mortgage is affordable to you, I will encourage you to f go for mortgage because it takes you out of risk. And the, the risk level with mortgage funding for your property is far, far, far better than uh, taking risk on your own try to become yourself a mason. Sometimes you think you are saving money with engaging these people, but I'm telling you, if you put the trouble they cost you and even the quality of service they give you, you might end up paying more for some of these things than if you had bought it. And then people to also understand that when you buy a property from well-established real estate developers, you are not buying just the units you see there. You are buying ambience. You are buying location. Mm. You are buying the services.
All of that goes All into All this builds into the house. Okay. But most of us will compare just the, the expenditure on the unit and compare it to buying a property from, say, Regiment. So, so that is one basic misunderstanding yes. there. People and don't get it that yeah, when yeah, you're that buying it, all of these all things of this come coming together. To it. And we are right. buying a nice community. Okay. You have address where somebody lives next by you. you somebody's coming to look for you. You live in a location where services are under your building. Some uh, water passages. Water services are all hidden under your structure. Okay, so ho hold your horses right there, Mr. <laughs> McGabel. Let's, let's take some of what uh, you've been sharing with us on social media. Uh, so some of the questions now, both, and this person is saying he, he would opt for both. Eric Kofi Asuo Ako uh, says both, depending on time, location, intended purpose, and value for money. I could build or just buy. More likely to build than buy. Uh, more likely to buy than build, no. though. Time factor. So some people would actually opt for this. I, I want to save time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to you know, go through this entire bit, so I'll just uh, buy rather than build. The next one is from Kpo uh, Klikpo, who says, I would like to build mine. There is a three-bedroom self-contained <coughs> that I'm crazily in love with. It drives me crazy any time I pass by. I think that goes back to what you were saying, Mr. Wobbill. <laughs> Dreaming and uh, planning ahead. Uh, Mikhail Ed says, <coughs> make sure you get tried and tested workmen when building, else they'll mess you up. Always let them show you their accomplishments before you engage them. I don't know about letting them show you their accomplishments, though. Uh, yes, you might, you might want to. You might... Uh, uh, have want to have some details done. about yes, what they've what done, they've done in the past, mm -hmm. but it might get tricky there. Akanki Oswald says, uh, saving to own a house and mortgage, which is better? Well, that is what uh, we're discussing right now. There are the pros and the cons. And uh, in the end, I'll ask each of the gentlemen uh, who have uh, joined uh, the conversation what exactly they would opt for. Ransford Kranting says, what if you go for a home loan and something unfortunate happens, like an accident? Yeah, where yeah. force majeure situations in, in, in such an instance, what do you do? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do this last one for now. Uh, Orlando Pirates, Orlando Pirates, Nitaki says, build so you can check the built quality. I think the building's quality, it is cheaper too. So that is the last point, and I, I'll come back to you, Mr. Megaibo, on that very point. I saw uh -huh. you shaking your head uh, uh, vigorously when, when that point was made. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was something someone communicated to me before we came on air that. If those, uh, some of these entities that are already put up, mm -hmm. when you go for them, the quality is not so good. And so a building that you would expect to last you 20, 25 years, after five years, you start seeing certain cracks and a whole lot of things in there. And then you have to maybe refurbish and sell, or you have to make do with it just like that. What point can you make? What is the reality? That is true. Uh, we have come uh, into contact with situations like this where Buyers have complained bitterly about certain products they have taken from estate developers. It is a general concern that we have asked our members, developers, to do. Unfortunately, some of these people are not even necessarily greater members. They don't belong to any kind of association, so you cannot even seek redress. But if anybody had bought their property and it was uh, purchased from a greater member, and those of us who have contacted us before who attest to the fact that we have taken steps to take uh, steps to remedy some of these things. But it's a problem that is uh, uh, requiring solution. And the, the solution for quality building lies in the hands of a state agency that is called, it used to be called Town and Country Planning. Now they are called Special Planning uh, Authority, uh, who have been given the mandate, those who issue the building permit are the same people who have been given the money to monitor and ensure that buildings are built to those specifications. So the shaking of my head was to tell the gentleman who thinks that the mere fact that he decides to take control of a building gives him an opportunity to check his workers. First of all, I wonder what qualities, technical qualities does he have as an individual to check the quality of uh, uh, workers of this nature. So it boils down to coming to professionals. Mm. But there's that they have, we have professionals who are trained as individual professionals to take certain aspects of your work. That is different. And then you buy a product from a developer who gives you a house. Especially you expect this guy to give you a property that is quality. Mm -hmm. So if they don't give you quality, it is your, you have to demand for it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm saying that if you bought a property from a grader member, for example, and you are not satisfied with it, you can make a report to grader and they will call this developer and get some kind of a redress for you. So, um, um, <clears throat> I sincerely believe that at the end of the day, if you give your, 
your your owning a house, you know, agenda to a professional to handle for you in the long run. You are better. Okay, off. so it's all, all about getting the right people. Yeah, if you get the right people, right people you are good to, to do go. for you. That'll be okay. Fine. Let, let, let me come um, to Israel Lai via Zoom right before I come back into the studio. You've you've listened to the conversation so far, and I'll just add this comment that has also come through. It's from Solomon Dakwa uh, at Kweku Solomon GH on Twitter, who says. As for mortgage, dear, if you don't earn a certain salary amount, forget. It's just an unrealistic venture for the <laughs> average worker. I'll go back to some of what you shared with us. On hindsight, would you still go down the same road you did in terms of a, a mortgage? You don't have to give us the details. Juxtaposed with, you know, building on your own. W which option, really, would, would you go for, even today? Uh, Israel, you would have to unmute uh, for us. Oh, I probably, okay, so sorry about that. Yeah, I'm not muted. So I'll say mortgage any day. <clears throat> mortgage any day because as I explained earlier, you may have, you may take a mortgage that you're having to pay 1,000 CDs a day. And there are many young men, single, who are paying rent of about 1,000 CDs a day, a month, really, right now, as we speak. So you can take a mortgage that you're having to pay maybe 1,000 CDs um, a month. And as I, I've already said, go for something small. Because as a young man, you have started, you started working, you started life, you started earning, you're yet to marry. Mm. Now, if you took a small house, even after you get married, you're going to be in the same room with, uh, and it's going to take a while, maybe a year or two before a child joins. So for that first two, three years that a child joins you. And when the child joins you, the child is going to be with you. I mean, the child really need their own room to start with. So the two of you, the couple, can be in that room with your child until maybe the child is five years. That gives you six years. So before you get married, if you start, off, if you purpose or determine that you're going to build your own place, you can do it instead of paying the thousand cities rent, you can put that thousand cities rent to something. You struggle initially, but as I said, your incomes will improve. And then when your wife also, you get married, your wife, you can go along with your wife and uh, bring your finances together. And yes, it's going to be a lot easier on you. So I'll say mortgage anytime, but yes, start small. Okay, uh, I'll just add this, uh, Mr. Lai, your income will improve, hopefully, uh, especially uh, as, as we know that a lot of young people even graduate out of school without jobs in the first place. And even when you get a job, the increments can be something else, whether in the public or private sector. So hopefully, uh, inshallah, no, like our Muslim brothers no, and sisters no. would say, See, then you can another, plan along. Another thing that people should take note of. Apart from your income's improving, I didn't want to bring this in, but somewhere along the line, you run into some booty, mm. you do some job, or you do you run into some, some bonus comes your way. That bonus. So here's the plan. You take a, a mortgage, let's say, of 100,000 cities, and you're paying 1,000 cities every month. You're, it's spread over, what, 10 years. But somewhere along the line, you run into some money, maybe 20,000 cities. That 20,000 CDs, you can use that to offset the principal. So the loan that used to be 100,000 CDs now goes down to 80,000 CDs. And then the 80,000 CDs, it means that what you're going to pay each month will reduce. So what you pay on the mortgage, the monthly pay repayment will reduce, maybe from 1,000 CDs to 800 CDs. So that over time, you realize that it doesn't impact you as much as it used to in the beginning. And 1,000 cities today, even if it stays the same way, 1,000 cities today is not 1,000 cities a year from now. Right. And 1,000 cities today, is not to, it's not a, a, um, thousand, the same 1,000 cities two years from now because it's, it's if inflation eats away that money. So right. Right. Bear, have all of that in mind. And uh, don't think that a mortgage is something that's so scary you want to touch. Okay. Uh, right before we get to some more of the questions you've been posing and the contributions you've been making on social media, let me come back into the studio. Mr. Wobble, now I want you to make this, again, as practical as possible. Is there any baseline where someone can say, beyond this line, going for a mortgage is going to be very difficult for me? I started with 1,000 CDs. 
And you mentioned that over 60 months or about five years, someone could own a $10,000 uh, home or a 60,000 CD at current rate home. Is there any rate where you, you would give advice, practical advice, that below this, maybe you might need to look at other options? Um, not actually. So um, that would be relative because it would depend, depend on the person's tastes. Okay, so let's, let's, let's consider, just to chip in again, let's consider, like Israel was saying, start small. So let's start with maybe a, a, a chamber and hall self-contained. Chamber and hall self-contained. Okay, so, so for instance, if you were earning, say, um, between 2,000 and 3,000 cities, mm. you could actually go for a mortgage up to about 150,000 cities. Mm. That you'd be paying over 15 years. But um, as Israel said, along the line, you could scale up and your, maybe 10 years down the lane, your property would have gained so much value that you can actually trade in for a bigger property. Right. Yes. Then also, um, I think it's also important for us to realize that when you take a mortgage, you actually get tax relief. So you can actually get tax relief. So yes, you're actually getting a tax incentive for actually taking a mortgage, which is also a savings for you. Because mind you, you are paying your, your, own, your own landlord. So you are paying rent yourself. And then also someone mentioned about what if an accident happens. So with us in Ecobank, when you take a mortgage, it's insured. There's life insurance on you. So should unfortunate happen, uh, happen, your dependents will not be kicked out of the house. Mm -hmm. And as you do this, we are actually doing due diligence on the property. So we pay for a, a building for you where you don't have litigation afterwards. Right. Because we would have had uh, external legal partners doing all the groundwork to make sure that you are actually getting something safe. So I would say a mortgage. So the land is secure, the property is secure. Exactly. All you have to do is maintain the payments. That is all. Okay. So point point uh, well made there. Let's let's get to social media and address uh, some more of the concerns you've been sharing. Uh, let's start with this one from Agbeko Kujo the second. Why not affordable renting? Then we can think of buying or building. And so that's the first point uh, that is made there. Affordable renting. Uh, that would uh, take something, wouldn't it? It would need some regularization. Uh, but w w this next message, Ebenezer Shun says, please, I have a land. Do we have uh, companies or organizations that can build for you so you'll be paying in installments? And that's a very interesting point there because I know some people who have actually taken up uh, different uh, ideas running around uh, what you're saying. Uh, Solomon Dakwa says, if I had that financial strength, I would buy any day. Maybe uh, do a few modifications of the house to suit my preference because building in this country is too much wahala. Today, land gas. Tomorrow, the asafwache. People want digging fee. And uh, tell us about it. That's, that's quite a, a lot to grapple with. That's from Solomon Dakwa. And as Jam says, building saves some cash while buying saves time and hustle. Recently checked some estate developing companies' website and the amount for a two-bedroom house can get me a four-bedroom house with some cash. Mortgage to finance such a house would mean paying 2,000 for 20 years. 2,000 CDs for 20 years. Uh, Solomon Dakwa comes back to say, as for mortgage, dear, if you don't earn a certain salary amount, forget it. It's just an unrealistic venture for the average worker. Right. So uh, those are some of the thoughts. And interestingly, some of them we were just addressing about the practicalities, how much the basic is. And it depends on your taste and it depends on how much you're earning at the time and what you want to do. But I see that you, you, you want to tackle some of the, yes. the questions. Which uh, two, one would you like two, to start? Uh, there are two of them that okay. is of interest to me. The one that is uh, uh, asking, he has a piece of land mm -hmm. and he's, he wants to know whether he can get people to build and take... Investors, invest. so to speak. Yes, yes. There are two ways to go about it. I think most of the mortgage companies now have products to, set, to give you money to build. Mm -hmm. I am sure uh, EcoBank can attest to it. If you have a land that is well documented and titled enough, they are willing to give you money to build. So it's just like taking a mortgage, but to build. And then with estate developers, if I'm an estate developer and I want to have a direct installment payment terms with you, most cases, it doesn't go beyond the project lifeline. So if my project is going to take me two years, I can give you soft payment terms for the period of two, the two years, because I'm also using borrowed money to do my project. And I can give you the period within which the project is ongoing. 
for you to pay. But beyond that, you have to look for some kind of facility to come and pay. And then the second question is the gentleman who is also saying that he checked for some prices online and he could use the money of a, a two-bedroom to, to buy double or something like that. I think there's a lot of misconception about that fact. First of all, let's get it fact, uh, this fact right. That you don't go look for a property in cantonment and look for the price of a property in cantonment and want to use it as a basis for arguing that the cost of houses is high. In every country that you travel, they are high-end, they have, uh, how will I call it, high-class locations. We have the Manhattans, where you can buy just two uh, bedroom flats for up to a million dollars, okay? So if you come to Ghana, we also have our kind of properties and locations that are of the higher uh, uh, class value. Don't go comparing those prices to everything else. But if you want a two bedroom in Kaswa, uh, the periphery of Accra, you get as low as $30,000 equivalent. That's how developers are building in Ghana. You see, so people don't, don't, don't get the facts right and just carry uh, some of this comparison. We don't, don't hold. And, uh, I mean, it depends on where you it want to build. Like you want to if you want to build in Klagon, yes. it's different. It's if you want it's to build in Jowulu, it's, it's different. different. So if you want it, to build in airport uh, residential, it's it will different. definitely and be different. And the prices, don't, they are not the same at all. You can't compare it. Definitely. So people should get that fact right and look for locations that are affordable to them. Most of the time, when you give them areas that are affordable to them, they also complain, it is too far, it is too this, it is too that. I agree. Sometimes, if government has taken its responsibility to provide some basic infrastructure, basic services, some of this land, it will be easy to convince everybody to go and take part of those land for all of us. So, I agree. The cost of houses are high, but there's work to be done before it can come down. And okay. if we agree okay. to get those works done, it will come down for everybody to buy it. But don't blame the commercial estate developer too much for the kind of cost you are seeing because it is very realistic. Let's do this. Uh, for those of you watching us, for those of you listening to us, I am going to, we're going to take a bit of a break. And when we come back, I will get into the studio with Mr. Warbill and the bit he mentioned about using your pension as some sort of uh, collateral, if you like, or mortgage to get that dream house. He will be giving us more details about that because I'm sure all of you, most of you, like I, uh, I'm itching to know, would want to know what the details are and how to arrive at that. All of that on The Probe when we return. Hello, my name is Evans Mensah and you can relive all the fun and excitement on Top Story, Newsnight and of course, Ghana Connect via podcast. All you need to do is to log on to my Joy Online slash podcast. Set for your favorite show and relive the moment. Joy 99.7 FM, your Super radio for designing listeners. Joy 99.7. Well, thank you very much uh, for staying with us tonight. We are discoursing on owning your dream house to build or to buy. That's the uh, house builder or house, uh, you know, buyer's uh, dilemma. We're discoursing on that tonight on the program. I'm here with Mr. Aimegaibo, who is with Greda, and Mr. Uh, Wobbill, who is actually with Ecobank. They are uh, breaking down the matters for us when it comes to what to do, whether we should buy or we should bill. Now, let me come into the studio, like I said. I'll break down that bit with you right before uh, we continue with Israel Lai on the other end. It has to do with the pension bit. I would want to know, for example, assuming there's a 35-year-old, he's been contributing for 10 years, so he started contributing when he was 25 years old. What would such a person have to do to... In, in terms of using his or her pension to secure a house? What, what should that person do? If, if the person were to come to you at Ecobank, what advice would you give the person? Okay, thank you, Ben. So um, what we have done at Ecobank um, with regards to our pension bag mortgage is that what we are saying is usually when you want to take a mortgage from us, and I think it's across the industry, we do 20% down payments. I know other banks would do something around that region. So you come to us, you, are, you would have, of course, identified the property you want. And what we are saying is that the 20% down payment, that would mean you would actually have to take cash to pay down to the developer. Then we would fund the remaining 80%. Mm. In this case, we are saying you don't need to 
bring cash, pay cash to the developer. Mm. You can actually just um, talk to your pension trustees. That would be assigned to EcoBank for the period of your mortgage. Mm. And then once that is done, we would go ahead and finance your project 100% upfront. So a couple of months ago, um, we signed a partnership with enterprise trustees um, that allows um, employees whose pensions, whose tier two and three are with enterprise trustees to use their pensions as security okay. for mortgages. We are in talks with um, Metropolitan, we are in talks with um, Petra. Very soon, employees who have their tier two and three with them could also come forward for us to do the same for them. And this is huge because if you were looking at, say, a 100,000 CD building and you needed to cough up 20%, that is 20,000. 20, and that same 20,000, if you had it, even if you had it as cash, you could actually use it to finish your building or to do something on the building. Mm. So this is actually very significant and we believe it's something that we can use to reduce the, the, the mortgage pressure on, 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 on people. So, so basically, you would have to have that pot of, let's say, 20,000 in your pension. Exactly. That would then be you know, assigned, assigned to yeah. your bank, Yes. And based upon which that person would have access to that facility. Yes. And then be paying what is left. Yes. No, so you're actually paying, we are actually disbursing 100% of whatever property you are acquiring. Mm -hmm. And so you'll be paying monthly installment on the 100,000. Mm -hmm. But mind you, you have the option of your tax relief on the mortgage. Mm. Secondly, you, your pension is also accumulating. And you know, the, it's compounding. Mm. The returns on it are compounding. The moment you withdraw, you would have reduced the returns on it. Mm. So that's why we are saying, instead of cutting down on the returns on your pension, leave it as it is. Just assign it to us, and then we would fund you 100%. A, a very quick one. I just want you to address this very quickly. So assuming the person doesn't have up to about 20000 in in their pension, as far as their contributions are concerned, can the person allot that sum and then top up? Exactly. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you for, uh, for answering that. Uh, mm. it, Mr. Lai, uh, Israel Lai, now, based on all that we have discussed up, up to this point in time, you lean towards, you know, the the mortgage, and uh, I can see that clearly. But if someone came to you and said, I want to build on my own, what are some of the key things you would tell that person to take stock of? For someone who says, I'm not going to go the way of mortgage, I want to build on my own, out of pocket, what is the, the crucial advice you would give such a person? Okay, so for someone, again, for anyone like that, I would say that you should start small. You should start small and get a structure on the property which you can use, you can build it like you're building a boy's quarters. So something that you can live in. So don't attempt to want to build something grand, two, three bedroom house. You may not need all the rooms to start with. So go for something small and you, it would mean that you have to find time to supervise the job. Because from the experience I've had, you give artisans, not just artisans, there are draftsmen you've given jobs to do. The draftsmen or people, you can call them contractors, you're giving them a job to do. Before you know, and for your kind of small structure, you don't need a, a contractor that's uh, you know going to take a certain percentage of mm. your money. Mm. But you, you can get, there are some mid-level contractors. You can reason with them. Let them give you a budget. Let them tell you how much it's going to cost for the project. So this brother-in-law of mine, if you approach him, he's going to tell you it's going to cost you this much. And interestingly, you often don't need to come up with the entire amount to start with. Right. Because if you're building, it's in stages, just like any project. At some stage, he needs money to do the foundation. At some stage, he's going to raise the blocks. At some stage, it's going to get to the roofing. So you really don't need all the money, but you should make sure you know where the money is going to come from right. to finance the project all through so that you don't start a project and leave it for maybe like a year. Because when you do that, your finances, you've locked up your capital. Mm. 
that capital could have been used for something. But if the project, if the contractor tells you, or okay. whoever he gets, tells you that we can build this for you in a month or two, you should make sure you should have that amount of money available within for that period. Okay. So that maybe, yes, you're starting with 10000 for the first week to, or to start with. But then in the third week, you should have another 20000 available for the mm. next stage of the project. Mm. Because it doesn't help if you start a project and leave it at some point and uh, you're saying your money is finished and it takes you one, so, two, so, three so years. Preparation, so preparation uh, is key. And if you're going to go down that road, you ought to know what you're looking at and be ready for it if you want to exactly. go out of your pocket. Okay. Exactly. One other thing I want to, I want to chip in. The, the people but very to, briefly, Israel, on that point. Yes. Who, people who have land and they want to build, as uh, has been indicated, you can go to the, uh, the mortgage companies and speak with them and they can make an arrangement like that for you. Or there are those two who don't have the land. You can approach mortgage companies or real estate developers who have service plots. And you can buy those service plots to start with. Okay? So you buy that on mortgage. Once you're done paying, then you can look at putting it on, on your structure. Okay. I'll give the last bite of the cherry to Mr. Amegayebo uh, in just about a minute. And there's also something that beats my mind. You, you can just chip it in there. It has to do with the fact that all of us are building uh, horizontal instead of vertical. You go outside and they have high-rise buildings. Wh wh why are we not capitalizing on the land so that uh, we can uh, accommodate more people? Yeah, there are several factors when it comes to that. And most real estate developers today don't go that, that line because of our own culture uh, in the past. Mm. We are not used to sharing space with people. Mm. And so it is uh, like economic risk on the part of any developer to go into that venture. Okay. So that is why we have not been there. And in terms of the structural development too, because we are going high rise, it might take a bit of time to complete. And it is kind of cost, uh, you know, intense. You need more money to go into it. And with the kind of funding that we get in this country, a short term, right. you have within a year or two to pay. And if you are going to uh, engross yourself into a project that is going to take about four years to complete, it tells you that by the time you are done, interest rate alone would have eaten all your money. Okay. So that is some of the reason why we have not gone that way. But with the right arrangement in place, this is happening. You've seen a lot of redevelopment going on within the country. Mm -hmm. That tells you that we are beginning to embrace it. And so it is something we are going to look, do more in the future. And so as far as you, the guests, are concerned, at least I see a consensus. Go mortgage. You agree yes, with it? go mortgage. Go mortgage, go Mr. Mortgage. Warbill. And of course, Israel Laya as well. Go mortgage. <laughs> and gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for joining too. the conversation. Mr. Right. Nagaibo is with Greda. Mr. Warbill is with Echo Bank. And of course, my own colleague, Israel Laya. This has been another installment of The Probe right here on Joy News. Thank you so much for making the time. My name is Benjamin Akaku. Do stay for the rest of our programs and check out more stories at myjoyonline.com.